Today's stacking section is going to sound a lot like yesterday's because in yesterday's show, we talked about the Dodgers, the Astros, the Twins, and the Diamondbacks. And the top stack for today are going to be pretty much the exact same teams, in part because some starters have switched around and stuff like that. But also, they're good offenses, and I value that quite a bit, more so now than I used to. And I think that I've had fun being able to stack good offenses so far this year. And I think that with the way the pitching salaries break for today, we can actually do that without restricting ourselves in terms of upside of pitcher. I think that my top guy for tonight is actually quite a bit under salary and a lot will allow you to do quite a bit of damage at hitter for today. So I want to dive in, let you know who that guy is, why I like him, or we should use that flexibility at hitter on this slate. Welcome on into the solo shop. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and numberfire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for numberfire.com here to break down Tuesday's 12 game main slate with lock set for 7.05 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday. We got a couple of weather notes, both of them wind related in St. Louis for the Cardinals and the Blue Jays. Winds are in from right at 11 miles per hour, so a slight downgrade to batters there. And same thing in Minneapolis, the Twins and the Tigers, slight downgrade to bats there as well as a result of that wind blowing in from right. That is the only weather for today, though. A couple spots where there could be some rain popping up, so maybe you do want to check in later on, but I think we should be good overall for today. Before we dive into the pitching preview, quick reminder to make sure you are subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. We, of course, are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, you name it, you can find us there. And while you're there, if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review. We have our PGA podcast for the Colonial coming up later on today with myself and Brandon Gadula going back over the PGA Championship and getting you set for this week in PGA DFS. Of course, UFC and NASCAR on this same feed as well. Hit subscribe to get all those podcasts right as they go live. The NBA playoffs are allegedly heating up. Um, not sure based on the on-court action, but hey, they're heating up. And you can make every game feel like Game 7 because you got to manufacture it some way on FanDuel Sportsbook, an official partner of the NBA. Throughout the playoffs, all customers can place a no-sweat same-game parlay each week. You'll get up to $20 in free bets if you don't win. FanDuel has so many ways to play, and best of all, when you do win, you'll get paid faster than a fast break. Either way, you'll get up to $20 in free bets if your same-game parlay during the playoffs, does not win. FanDuel Sportsbook, an official partner of the NBA. Must be 21 plus in select states. Refund issued as non-withdrawable free bets that expire seven days after receipt. Max free bet, $20 per week. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Arizona, call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777, or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY. In Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-889-9789. In Wyoming, 1-800-522-4700, or in West Virginia, 1-800-GAMBLER.NET. Pitching preview for this Tuesday main slate. We got Zach Gallon at the top. He checks in at $10,900 on FanDuel, followed by Corbin Burns at 10-6. Chris Bassett is $10,000. Framber Valdez is $9,900. Walker Bueller, $98. Dylan Cease is $96. Kevin Gaussman, $94. Max Fried is $91. Then we have Bruce Zimmerman, Logan Webb, Dane Dunning, Sonny Gray, and Noah Syndergaard as the others at $8,000 or higher. Now, it is a very good slate for pitchers, and you got a lot of guys I like and a lot of guys you could use. I just don't think I can like any of them more than I like Dylan Cease checking it at just $9,600 for tonight. He would be my top arm of the day, and that's all acknowledging that Cease is imperfect. He has gotten the quality start bonus on FanDuel just twice across eight starts, and that's six points. That's equivalent to six or two, two strikeouts. Even without that, We've seen Cease blow up. He has topped 50 FanDuel points twice. He got 60 in one of those. He's had 40-plus FanDuel points in five out of eight games. And that includes the starts before he was fully stretched out. That is the power of a strikeout on FanDuel. You can have Garrett Cole last night let up five earned runs and still getting you 46 because strikeouts are so valuable. Cease has a 37% strikeout rate for the full season, which actually increases to 42% 
if you look at the five starts, he's been throwing more fastballs. One of those starts was against these very same Red Sox, a team he will face tonight, which means that they did see him recently, but it was back on May 7th, which is about two weeks ago, and he did pretty well in that game. Eight strikeouts and five innings of one run ball. He had a 14.9% swing and strike rate, and that game was in Fenway. This one is in Chicago. We've seen Cease get eight plus strikeouts and all but one start so far this year. And that's while facing some lower strikeout teams, the Red Sox being one of them, but also the Royals twice and the Guardians once. So he's flawed. He's inefficient with his pitching. And I do want to see guys get that quality start bump, but Cease can get there and his strikeouts help make up for it, even if he does not. So for tournaments, I'm going to go with Dylan Cease number one because that upside that he has is so tantalizing and so reachable with that strike array being what it is for seats. For cash games, I do think I prefer Zach Gallen. It's not the best matchup in the world. He's facing the Royals. They're a pretty low strikeout team, but I think we could just see Gallen shove here regardless. And that's because Gallen has been elite so far this year. He got a 3.13 skill interactive ERA, 26% strikeout rate, a 31% hard hit rate allowed, which is the best mark on the slate. The Royals probably not going to do a whole lot of damage against him. Their current active roster has a 91 WRC plus against righties with a 123 ISO. And plus the roof is expected to be closed for tonight. Now that didn't matter a ton last night where there was a ton of offense in this park still, but it makes it less of a hitters park than it typically is. And Gallon doesn't really need that necessarily because he is someone who has had some Decently large home road splits. Since the start of 2020, all full years of Arizona, Gallon has a 30% strike rate at home, whereas it dips to 24% on the road. In his four home starts this year, he has had seven, five, seven, and nine strikeouts. And that's while allowing two total earned runs across those four starts. So we get an upside boost for Gallon here. His floor is already sky high. And I think that's enough to put him above Gosman, put him above Burns, even though we do see Gallon in a low strikeout matchup here. Well, I'll talk more about Gosman and Burns in Things to Watch, but I think for me, it's Cease number one for tournaments, Gallon number one for cash games, and then Gosman and Burns, good considerations, but not quite as high as either of those guys in those two formats. Among the value guys, I think you have two really nice options. Both of them are in great matchups. One of those is George Kirby. He's at home against the A's. So if you want to bet on talent, which Kirby has plenty of, it's a good spot to do so. I'm on board with that. But I'm going to give slight preference to Sonny Gray at $8,200. Gray is also at home. He's facing the Tigers here. Obviously a very good spot. They have a 67 WRC plus against righties with a 26% strikeout rate. And they're pretty poor in other areas as well. We've seen Gray take advantage of good matchups recently. He's faced Oakland twice since he came off the IL, so a couple of revenge games there for Sonny Gray. He's allowed two earned runs in 10 innings with 12 strikeouts and just two walks against the A's in that time. He also had eight strikeouts against a very low strikeout Cleveland team sandwiched between those two starts. That's why I'm here. I think that he will pitch well in a dream matchup. The reason that Gray doesn't separate from Kirby for me is pitch count because since coming back, Gray has gone 66, 82, and then 84 pitches. The 84 did get him through the sixth inning, but the twins tend to be pretty conservative with pitch counts more so with like Chris Archer than others, but like they do tend to be on the low side in terms of starting pitcher pitch counts. That's why to me, both Gray and Kirby are viable among the value options. Just have a slight preference for Gray here. Uh, If they were to let him go 95 in this spot, he could erupt. And I'm high enough on Gray to actually use him for tonight. You know, sometimes we have a lot of good studs. I'll say, hey, here's my value guy. I'm probably not going to use him though. In this spot, I will use Sonny Gray and I will rank him highest among the values, but you can filter in George Kirby as well. Let's move now to the stacking section. As mentioned, it's going to be a little bit boring if you listen to yesterday's podcast because pretty much the exact same teams across the board, but I do think it's necessary. So let's start here with the Dodgers and go from there. They're facing Josiah Gray, so it's a Josiah Gray revenge game for today, but still letting up a ton of hard contact, and that's why we're here in the stacking section. We're up to five starts on Gray with more sliders in his repertoire and fewer forcing fastballs. And again, I think that long-term, 
this will be a very good move for Gray. It hasn't quite clicked yet, though. His strikeout rate pretty stagnant at 23%. He is letting up a 51% fly ball rate with a 40% hard hit rate. He let up three earned runs last time out despite getting seven strikeouts and no walks, pitching in a, a very pitcher-friendly park against a, an okay offense, but not a Dodgers-level offense in the Marlins. Gray's let up three earned runs in three straight starts and in four of his past five. He let up three home runs specifically in one game and two in another. So I love the strikeouts, and I think that long-term, that does give Gray upside as a pitcher, but I'm just inclined to keep stacking against him while the dinger potential for the opposing team is as high as it is right now. So the Dodgers, once again, going to be a top stack for today. It seems like Evan Rios is earning more and more playing time for the Dodgers, and he may not play today. He started two straight against righties, so could be offered today. Justin Turner getting back in there. But just as a general point, when Rios is in there, I would say he is fully, fully on the table. He's hitting the ball really hard this year. He actually has, in a small sample, granted, but a 21% barrel rate. He does strike out too much, which means if I were the Dodgers, I probably wouldn't start him today against Gray because Gray can get strikeouts. But just broadly, when Edwin Rios is in there for the Dodgers, I am very okay, including him in stacks. I think he's a good batter. So uh, okay with that. If you have to go there for today, don't know if he'll play, but if he is, I would give the green light there. The other repeat stack for today is the Twins. I'm not sure who they're facing. Uh, Ronnie Garcia is, is listed as a starter for the Tigers, but previous reporting had said that the starter would be Bo Brisky. So Garcia could be the opener or the site could just be wrong as it was yesterday. Either way, I think the Twins will be in play here tonight. We talked to Brisky yesterday, very stackable profile, both due to the bad balls and the play discipline. Stack against Brisky if he winds up being the guy. Let's talk about Garcia for a second, because he was electric in his most recent start. He had six strikeouts in two and two-thirds innings of relief. That's pushed his skill interactive ERA down to 2.18 for this year. But I don't think that should override the larger sample on Garcia. We have... 38 and two thirds innings of Garcia in his career in the big leagues. In that time, 8.2% swing and strike rate. It's an 8.9% this year. He has allowed a 47% hard hit rate with a 44% fly ball rate. Those are all very stackable numbers. We did see Garcia get more strikeouts in AAA last year across a four start sample, but the bat, the fly balls were still very much there. In other words, even if he does get strikeouts, I think he could wind up being in that Josiah Gray zone where it comes with a lot of dangerous bad at balls to the point where you can still sack against him, even though he's striking some guys out. So regardless of who winds up being the bulk guy here, I think the twins are a good option for stacking and they're both righties too. So we don't need to change which guys we target, no matter who winds up being out there for tonight. I, I'm really impressed with Gary Sanchez so far this year against righties. He's cut his strikeout rate down to 23%. That was 29% last year and 35% the year before that. And he's done that while keeping the power high because he has a 250 ISO with a 56% fly ball rate. For whatever reason, it seems like that the approach for Sanchez is just really working this year. He's $3,100, not a value play by any means, but I still will be in on him here. I just want to reiterate that I like what I've seen so far. The peripheral is very good. I'm expecting Sanchez to continue to hit righties very well and i am okay with turning towards the twins whether it's brisky or garcia i think both those guys put the twins in a good spot if you need some value for today again i don't think you need as much given that cease is under salary but if you want to get gallon in there stack him with his offensive teammates and turn to the dynamacks they're facing jonathan heasley not a big sample on heasley yet in the majors but i do feel good stacking against him heasley has made two starts in the majors and they haven't gone all that well. He has two strikeouts compared to seven walks. Now, he's worked around this, um, but that's probably not super sustainable. The AAA numbers for Heasley have some issues in there, too. He has a 29% strikeout right there, which is a very good number, but his swing strike rate is 11.7%, and his ERA down in AAA is 4.44. That's a little high relative to his peripherals, which typically indicates he's letting up too much hard contact, and we've seen that in the majors as well. We've seen Heasley make five starts between last year and this year in the majors. His hard hit rate allowed is 53%, which is a really big number. So he's probably going to struggle with play discipline, and he's probably going to struggle with hard contact. 
He's facing an offense with a 197 ISO against righties this year. That is the third best number on this slate. They also have the highest fly ball rate too. So again, the roof is closed. That is a downgrade for offense for sure, but I do still think they're a great option, especially if he needs some value, which he might. If you want to jam in Mookie Betts, Byron Buxton, et cetera, et cetera, it's okay to go down here to get some value out of Arizona. And when you're looking at stacks, I always want to view things through the, the lens like a building block. With the Marlins, it's Jazz Chisholm. You always want him in your in your stack. For the Twins, I try to get Byron Buxton in there. Shocker, I know. Um, you want to find a building block to include in basically every stack. For me, that's Dalton Varsho on Arizona. He has a 48% fly ball rate against righties this year. He can swipe some bags, makes tons of hard contact, and it seems like his good start is pretty legit. So I would put um, Varsho one. Josh Rojas is in play. If he's able to play, he's still banged up, it seems like, but I would use him if he plays. David Peralta getting more loft this year. Alec Thomas, uh, lower in the order works. Christian Walker, even against righties, is hitting for power this year. Another home run last night. Jake McCarthy, minimum salary. He hit sixth last night. He hit well in AAA. We'll talk about him in a second, but just a fun team to stack with a lot of guys I like to use on this team. So Arizona, to me, Really fun stack with both value and upside, which is a combo I am not inclined to turn down. Let's go now to things to watch. I did want to talk briefly about why I'm a tiny bit lower on Burns and Gosman. For Gosman, he is on the road against a super, super, super low strikeout opponent. The Cardinals are at just 16% against righties this year. We've also seen Gosman cut back on his slider a bit recently, which is a bit concerning. It's noteworthy to me, so I might just be off Gosman for tonight. Burns is on the road as well, and like Gallon, has a bit of a dip on the road in terms of his, his home road splits, but he's on the road whereas Gallon's at home. I am higher on Burns than I am on Gosman. You could easily defend putting Burns second above Gallon if you wanted to. I just prefer Gallon by a bit. Like raw ceiling, 95th percentile, maybe even 90th percentile. It's going to favor Burns over Gallon, but I do like Gallon a lot, so I want to put him in the number two slot for today. Talked about the Astros against Zach Plesac yesterday. I think that they are in play again because they're actually facing Zach Plesac for today. It wound up being Tristan McKenzie who they faced. I'm totally fine with facing Plesac here. Does let up a lot of hard contact. Not a high strikeout rate for him, but that's a good recipe for stacking. It's almost a carbon copy of yesterday's stacking menu. I'm okay with that uh, because... Mostly worked out pretty well yesterday. So uh, the Astros once again in play for today. Finally, I'm okay with some Yankees one-offs here. They're facing Bruce Zimmerman, who's been pretty good this year, but they did just see him last week. They scored five runs against him in five innings. So he he's pitching well this year, but he lives pretty dangerously with his batted balls. Not a big strikeout guy. So it's a fine profile for stacking against such a powerful team. So I'm okay going back to the Yankees once again in this spot. Let's finish up here with the dinger calls for today. I got to go Freddie Freeman at the top. Josiah Gray does struggle with a lot with lefties. Freeman is an absurd hitter who's had really good numbers, advanced numbers so far this year, played well last night. So going back to Freddie Freeman once again for today. For the fun one, let's talk about Jake McCarthy. I mentioned him as being a, a minimum salary guy for the Arizona. In AAA, before his promotion, a 293 ISO, he can swipe some bags too. So he might not get the home run for you. And that's kind of the whole point of the dinger call section. But hey, even if he doesn't, might swipe a bag for you. So uh, Jake McCarthy, the fun home run call for today. McCarthy and Freeman, the two home run calls for this Tuesday slate. That is all that we have here for today on the solo shop. But we are back again later on today to break down this, this week's PGA Charles Schwab Challenge. We're going to break that down with myself and Brandon Gadula, letting you know our top options in each salary tier over on FanDuel. You can find that on the FanDuel YouTube page at 10 a.m., but then up on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed immediately after that. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcasts. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups. We'll talk to you once again on Wednesday for another slate of MLB DFS. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.